welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. With over 20 consecutive days of load shedding in May, South Africans have justifiably questioned whether ESCOM, in fact, has a plan in place to deal with the poor performance of its plot. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the matter. Hi Terence. Hi, How did the plant get to this point and does ESCOM have a maintenance plan? Well, that uh, is the big question. How did ESCOM allow its plant? You know, they've got 43,500 megawatts of capacity, nameplate capacity in South Africa um, that ESCOM is able to dispatch. So that doesn't include the renewable programs that have been brought in or any of the short-term IPP that's available. So ESCOM is able to dispatch, theoretically, 43,500 megawatts. We've gone through a summer now where ESCOM has been battling to keep the lights on uh, without load shedding. Um, at around 29, 28, 29,000 megawatts. So there's a massive gap uh, between theor our theoretical capacity and what we're able to actually produce on a daily basis. And this, I think, the way we've got to this point is really, one, there was a surplus mindset going back to the 90s. So we were mothballing plant, we were probably under-investing in maintenance going back many, many years. And then when it started to tighten up around 2006, when we started to see the first blackouts from the Western Cape, and then it progressively got worse and we had that very uh, bad incident in 2008. And then we had to recover from that ahead of the, the World Cup um, in 2010. I think there was a number of outage, outages that were delayed uh, in those days. That, that knock-on effect has now come back to haunt us. So you've had delayed maintenance um, for tight systems, maybe not having enough capacity to do the maintenance once uh, uh, you know, once the maintenance was scheduled and we've been pushing back maintenance to the point where now in 2015 we've got an energy availability factor uh, that used to be 90% in 2001 and has fallen to sort of between 70 and 75%. So we don't have that theoretical nameplate of 45,000 megawatts anymore. We've got a, a much lower uh, capacity that we can actually draw on on a daily basis. Uh, whether there's a maintenance plan, I think we're starting to he uh, hear signs of what ESCOM is trying to do to arrest the problem. So I think the first thing, as with any problem, is to admit that you've got it. And I think ESCOM has admitted now that it's got a maintenance problem. And the, the next step is to s put in place uh, programs to start first uh, arresting the decline, stabilizing the system, and then eventually hoping to get on, you know, onto our normal scheduled uh, maintenance, which means that the plant availability will be much higher. Now, this is going to take some time, and I think we saw um, President Jacob Zuma in Parliament uh, talking about a 24 to 36 month period of where we're going to be vulnerable, and I think that's somewhat aligned to the uh, ESCOM maintenance recovery program, which is a sort of a three year process. Now, whether that means that we're going to have load shedding all the time or not, uh, is, is, you know, is, it's hard to say. But I think that there are other levers that need to be pulled, not just improving the performance of the coal-fired fleet, but improving non-ESCOM supply as well as demand side management that might be able to get us out of this situation. Why isn't it doing higher levels of maintenance? Yes, that's a big question now because when people uh, assess this and they see big backlog. So why don't we stop some of these power stations, you know, really focus for a period of weeks or months on maintaining and then bring those power stations back. And Eskom, I think, did look at that. I think the initial aspiration was to move maintenance up to 15% of that 43,500 megawatts dispatchable power. Instead, we've seen maintenance really only tick up from around 7% to around 10% of that nameplate capacity. And the reasons are, are manifold, but I think one is that ESCOM simply doesn't have the people to operate, operate maintenance at 15% level or, or well uh, north of 10%. It doesn't have the finances to do it either. We know that's well known because it is an expensive exercise. And the other big issue is that there's not a lot of space in the system to do that without massive amounts of load shedding. So I think uh, ESCOM's approach is to try and limit the amount of load, load shedding while slowly, incrementally uh, catch up on the maintenance. And the big shift, I think, over the th last few months is the one is the, the policy changes that we don't have the keeping the lights on policy anymore, which gives them the mandate in some ways to move ahead with high levels of maintenance. But there's because of the constraints, I don't think they're going to go well beyond 
the 10% of, of maintenance. And the focus, uh, therefore, is really going to be about the quality of the maintenance because there has been a big problem with that. When a uh, plant goes down, when it returns, it, it, there's a lot of failure. Uh, so there's going to be a lot more attention. And we've seen that an important group of people that were at uh, Megawatt Park, the, these maintenance engineers that were centralized, have now been sent back to the power station, to the assets themselves, to try and run these maintenance projects. That's an important step. But I think there's still a long way to go. These are big pieces of equipment. You know, one unit is uh, 600 megawatts. That's enough to power just about all our neighbors uh, at once. And when you bring uh, those things down, these are big pieces of equipment that you have to maintain. So it takes some time to do. So it's uh, so th I think the issue of going higher, I think the engineers are saying just go higher and do a lot more, but I think it's a time-space issue, it's a finance issue, and actually it's a skills and resource issue. What is the prognosis for the fleet and for load shedding? Well, the prognosis for the fleet I think is still, it's going to be tough, as I said, three years of catch-up really around this main, and that's if, that we s if we adhere to it diligently and we do it properly and there's a high quality of maintenance. So the prognosis for the return of an energy availability factor to those plus 80 percent to 90 percent range is going to take some time from the coal-fired fleet. So the prognosis therefore on load shedding, the ESKIM modeling is 25 percent of days in a year will be uh, a very high risk of load shedding. That's 90 days in a year. We've already seen April 12 consecutive or, uh, days. Um, and then we've seen in May well over 20 consecutive days of load shedding. Generally what happens is summer is much more vulnerable because there's a lot more maintenance uh, during that period and winter we'll see some tapering of the, of the planned maintenance and also unplanned or unscheduled breakdowns and unplanned maintenance and load losses is higher in the summer months. So the plant generally performs better in a cooler, wet, uh, drier environment which is what um, uh, the, where, the, where the power stations are in Pumalanga, the winters are cooler and drier. So we should see maybe less uh, risk of load shedding during winter, but they need to bring back quite a lot of plant because we're still talking about a peak of around 36,000 megawatts. And uh, you know, we s uh, if we look at the pr uh, what Eskom's got available, it's well below that level at the moment. So the prognosis is still high risk of load shedding, I think, for at least the next 18 months is what Eskom's analysis is showing. And that will only really lessen if some of this maintenance, which is a more of a longer term, a three year type program, starts kicking in and we see higher performance from the coal fired fleet, slightly higher performance. But more it's about really putting the other levers and it's about the non Eskom supply. So that's really in that short term would be co generation capacity. Uh, and there's a tender that's going to be coming out soon on that. And then very crucially getting our demand response and demand side management going. Unless those levers are pulled together with this maintenance lever, the 18-month the uh, horizon is going to push out even further in terms of the vulnerability to load shedding. But at the moment, the model suggests that if the maintenance kicks in <coughs> and we improve uh, energy availability factor, if we have the demand side lever pulled and we have a non escom supply that can be brought on fairly quickly, plus we'll have the first unit on the DUPI, plus we'll have the DOE Pika plants coming in later this year, you know, and uh, the Gula in early next year. So we'll have some supply side relief from Eskom itself in the sense that we'll go to about 45,000 theoretical nameplate capacity. Then by the sort of August, September next year, we might have a, a lower risk of load shedding. But, you know, but as I said, there's a number of balls in the air and all of those have to be sustained and juggled uh, to ensure that that prognosis uh, is improved. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.